Hi, I'm Jay McCarthy. I'm 28 years old and I'm from Australia. Professional cyclist for 10 years and welcome to Andorra. <laughs> I uh, started cycling when I was around 14 years old. Grew up with my mum and uh, the way to keep me busy, she had me in a lot of different sports. Found the love for the bike. I went to the Junior Worlds in 2009, finished seventh in, a, in Russia. And then I went on to the next year at the Junior Worlds to finish second in the road race. I actually really enjoyed the Ardennes Classic, so I was a bit of a puncher of a, of a rider. So if I was coming to a, a finish with a smaller group, I normally had a, a, a good chance to have a good result. My first professional win was in the Tour Down Under. And another great victory was in uh, the Cadell Evans race. I was the first Australian to win the Australian That's World Jay Tour McCarthy. one day race. But number 14 though, that is directly behind him. That's Jay McCarthy. The fact he's putting the pressure on me, maybe it's for Jay this time around. Jose Consalves now going forward. It is McCarthy who is on his wheel. Jay McCarthy followed by Gerrans, followed by Lars Back. McCarthy opens up. Gerrans is fading. It's McCarthy. Racing in Europe most of the season and starting the season in Australia to take a victory where my family would always travel down to watch the races was quite special. And actually my uh, great uncle, it was his 70th birthday that day I won and he bought me my first bike and he was a tough man and to see a tear down rolling down his eye was quite a special moment for me. So the beginning of 2020, we started in Australia as a normal season would. I had a chance to have a, a go at leading the race and then other chances during the year, but generally I was a, a domestique. I unfortunately had a crash in the second stage of Tour Down Under where I took a lot of skin off. Um, and then for everybody, yeah, that was the start of the corona. We went to go to Strada Bianchi, the race was cancelled, ended back up at an altitude training camp and then everything was cancelled and then I came back here to Andorra, only really allowed to go out if you're going grocery shopping. Yeah, it started to grit on me, so um, I was uh, yeah, probably questioning a little bit what I was doing whilst my family back home in Australia are getting older, I'm missing out a lot of things and cycling itself was probably not giving me the same sort of love that I I once found in it. But I turned myself around in that period and when the season really started again in the end of July, the pressure was starting to build. I really wanted to get a couple of results because I wanted to re-sign a contract. And my last chance was to go to the Vuelta a Spena. You see, you know, the breakaway going at a real fast whoa. rate of a crash. Yes, and a big one, a crash and a roll into the ploughed field here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So a stage seven of the Vuelta a Spena was looking for a result, as I said, and uh, coming into this stage, it wasn't going to be a stage that really suited me, if unless I was in the breakaway. And actually, the crash happened in not a very technical section. It was a freak accident, and I don't really have anybody else to blame. Hit the pothole on the ground, went over the handlebars. It was around 70 kilometres an hour. I. Uh, brushed the tarmac and I just went rolling into a into a paddock. A standard thing for a cyclist to do is grab his shoulders or grab my head and then that's when it finally kicked in that my leg was quite in a lot of pain. I'd looked up and as your legs would normally be straight down in line from around my knee to my shin my leg was starting to point off to the to the left. <laughs> I knew I'd done something pretty bad. Um, I was surrounded by good people. My girlfriend is from the Netherlands, so instead of coming back here to Andorra, I went there for her to support me, and uh, she introduced me to some really good physiotherapists that at the start would even visit me from home. Four times a week I'm in the physio still, building the, the strength of the leg, also getting the range of movement of the leg back to, to normal. Slowly I started to realise that if I was going to come back, this was the way I would like to do it anyway. I would have no outside pressure from 
sponsors or teams or anything and I could figure out if this is actually what I wanted to do. Once I could and I first started with taking the wheelchair out and I would go through Vondel Park in Amsterdam and my girlfriend would push me around, we'd have a coffee, play around a little bit with the, the area and it was quite nice to, to see how lively the city was. I, uh, yeah, after one month I was out of the wheelchair, then I was onto crutches. From there, about three months after the accident, I got back onto the bike and I was lucky enough to find a bike shop in the area with probably because of my name and what I'd done in the career was also quite an easy way to make a conversation and it was good to be able to find some support through them and I was quite real with them and that gave me opportunity to try and find the love of the sport which I was, was which was important to me. Just a crazy time to come out of this city. In this period I've started to put back a little bit more into that community that gave so, so much to me when I was first there and I uh, am now leading some rides a few times a week for this for this bike shop en route and uh, I've really learnt that in the last 12 months that I've, I've found my way and if I ever can come back to that racing I would like to keep that up more and I think that gives me a lot more motivation and it actually gives me uh, more shape in, in the long run. Lucky enough found some great guys in Australia who are supporting me with the clothing and uh, meeting some people through that, which has been very uh, exciting for me and gives me another look at cycling and, and different ways of seeing what, um, what this sport can bring to people. Now I'm here back in Andorra. This is my first two weeks back here and living in the Netherlands in this period and doing uh, my training there was quite nice because it's quite flat there. So I hadn't, hadn't climbed for quite some time. When I arrived back here, one of my ex-teammates was in town doing a training camp and because he's excited to see me, I was excited to see him. And I yeah, just thought, you know, you have to give it a go. It's time to get out there, try climb the mountain that you used to do and off we went and yeah, it wasn't painful in the leg but it was definitely uh, painful Then I remember how I used to climb the hills but that's also exciting that now I can get over these mountains again and that will be another motivation for me to start building the training up and who knows how long it'll take to get back but I feel that I'm in a moment now that I'm enjoying the bike, I've got good people around me and anything is possible. I really had those problems where I thought that if I wasn't coming back to cycling that was it and I was hating it and I was basically, you know, I could have given up a few times but in that moment where I met some great people and I'm doing some different things besides just doing my training and racing my bike on the weekend. I've uh, mixed up my training a little bit, I've got onto a gravel bike, working with different charities to, to raise some money for different things and that gave me a way of thinking that if it wasn't to come back to pro cycling that I would be able to to use cycling in a different way that I think would be just as uh, giving as just winning any race that I ever did. So I feel, I feel was knowing that there's so many different adventures that I could take through this sport, great people that I can meet and opportunities that I would be able to do if it wasn't the case that I could get back to racing. In that case, it's still not the point that I want to be back in the pro peloton. It's more to know that I'm going to love this sport no matter what. <laughs>